what I have to say is that uh, I have always been impressed by mathematics applied to surgery because, you know, our role as an uh, academician uh, surgeon is really to invent su- the future in surgery. I want to start uh, to start and to to explain uh, that uh, why why I'm so fascinated by science in in surgery. It, that was uh, in 1991. You know that uh, I am uh, I was a normal surgeon, and in 1991, you see this man. I attend an exceptional lecture. He is a colonel of the U.S. Army. He's a surgeon. And you imagine that in 1991, he had a lecture whose name was Medicine Will Switch from Industrial Age to Information Age. And in 1991, he spoke about the, uh, all the, the strengths of uh, Internet, of virtual reality, augmented reality, robotics, uh, artificial intelligence, 1991. And so I came back and I decided to, to create an institute totally dedicated to this kind of science applied to surgery, to the concept of augmented surgery, to speak about what we do, which is augmented reality. And I repeat, that is uh, your science applied to surgery. So augmented surgery is augmented vision. We need to see in transparency, and that is only possible uh, if we use uh, the different algorithm of virtual reality and augmented reality. The second thing it's very important for you is is uh, the robotics uh, robotic system we will speak and show how we can augment the brain of the surgeon that is a medical image that is a ct scan but it is very difficult for the surgeon and the physician to understand the ct scan so we have software by our team of researchers and you see that uh, immediately we can have a 3d reconstruction of uh, the patient and this 3d reconstruction of the patient uh, is so easy for us to understand all the details uh, of uh, the anatomy so that is uh, what we call the uh, virtual reality planification uh, you have another example this one is fantastic it is a, a huge tumor in a baby of uh, two months uh, old and you see that it is an amatoma what we have to do before the operation is to navigate inside and you will see what we are looking for is to see the arteries going to the tumor and that is uh, because it is the first thing we need to approach when we are surgeon and you see this one and this one two arteries going to the tumor for the pediatric surgeon it has been very easy because when we imagine this big tumor, we, we, we think it will be hours of operation. No, in 45 minutes, it was performed uh, with this possibility of planification. Uh, uh, just to, to finish, to say also augmented reality. So we have the 3D image. And what we want is to have the fusion between the virtual image and the uh, real image given by the camera. And that is what we call augmented reality. So augmented reality is uh, this one. So you see we have the medical image. We transform the tumor we want to operate on. And uh, when we see uh, the tumor in green, we can have a perfect analysis of the anatomy. And I repeat, that is only possible because uh, the software uh, load us to do this uh, reconstruction. And when we operate, so that is... uh, that is uh, the beginning of the dissection, and uh, we, we have this possibility of uh, superimposition. But it is not so simple because uh, in, in the real life, when we do the, the CT scan and when we operate, when we operate, you have a lot of movement. Uh, so these one are the movement of the liver uh, due to the bracing, and we need to solve this challenge. Once again, it has been possible for the computer team, uh, computer scientist team, you, you see, to put some software on the sternum and they have developed predictive algorithm to know with the, the modification of the sternum, what is going to be the modification of the position of uh, the liver. So next one is this one. You see, during an operation, you have a modification of uh, the position of the organ, the elasticity of the organ. So you need to understand how difficult it is for the computer to understand this new position of the organ. Here again, we have a very strong team working on that. 
and uh, with uh, intraoperative imaging system, we can have a perfect fusion in parallel with the movement of the organ. One word about uh, augmented hand, that is robotics. Uh, robotics, uh, as I said before, uh, we were very proud in 20 years ago to do the first remote uh, surgery. Uh, so that was a surgery between New York. I was in New York. My patient was in Strasbourg. Why it is interesting? Because it was uh, 20 years ago with uh, engineers of France Telecom. And today we have a lot of publication, especially coming from China, because with a 5G uh, mobile, it's possible to have this kind of remote surgery. But 20 years ago, it was something very difficult. Uh, here is uh, the, the video where you see uh, uh, that, uh, as I said before, it was not a surgical challenge, but an information age challenge. And uh, a lot of uh, different, uh, you see, cable setting of the robot uh, in Strasbourg. Uh, the, the, the robot at this period was the Zeus uh, robot. And uh, you will see a lot of engineers from France Telecom in Paris, and myself, I was in uh, in Strasbourg, uh, in uh, New York. So you see the engineers here. Uh, so that was really, I, I repeat why it is impressive. It is because it was 20 years ago and we had to solve the problem of delay to have a delay of less than 200 milliseconds which was uh, totally impossible uh, at this period. And the engineers, uh, the success of a delay of less than 132 uh, milliseconds. So that was the building where we were. Uh, it was a, a subsidiary of uh, Equant, uh, and you see the robot. So I was very comfortable in this office of uh, France Telecom and very proud after because this... Uh, uh, operation has been accepted in high priority in uh, nature. As I say, uh, uh, another uh, another uh, period we need your science applied to surgery. This one is uh, how we can uh, we can put like a GPS in the operating room. So you see, the surgeon is operating on a robot, a Da Vinci robot from Intuitive Surgical. And uh, when he is emerged in the, what we call the master part of uh, the robot, uh, he can see the operation given by the camera, but also you see the 3D image. And uh, if he has a 3D image, he has a perfect landmark. So that is really as a GPS in, uh, in a car. Finally, uh, just augmented brain, that certainly it is your specialty, uh, artificial intelligence applied to surgery. One example is what our engineers and developers they have done is to create uh, like a, a control tower in the operating room. And you see that we can collect all the data, the preoperative image, the external cameras, the laparoscopic camera, the physiological signals given by the anesthesiologist, and all that is uh, stored in, in the cloud. And we can follow the patient until he is returned to work. And also here, for example, it is a use of artificial intelligence to, to give an alarm if the step of a surgery are not totally respected by the surgeon. So another application of uh, safety in surgery. I, I want to finish uh, and to explain the, that we cannot uh, develop a uh, uh, this kind of uh, revolution in surgery, if we have not also a training center, and that was uh, IRCAD concept, uh, and uh, we will see that we have also that uh, the plan in, in Rwanda. So that is a training course, and we use all these new technology to train the surgeon. Uh, we, we, we have a lot of uh, a platform for uh, robotic surgery, and this one will be totally copied to have the same in, in Kigali in our center. And that is a globalization. And uh, this globalization concept is important because you are involved for the African uh, continent. You see that we start <coughs> the, to create IRCAD in France. That was in 1994. And after that, we have another one in Taiwan in 2007, two in Brazil, one in Sao Paulo, one in, uh, uh, one in Rio de Janeiro, and uh, one in Libano, in, uh, in Beirut. And you see that at the middle, 
we have this fantastic project we are going to see by a short video in Rwanda and uh, two other projects, one in uh, China uh, and one in uh, USA, the only one which is not signed today. So just to know, it's always the same concept, attract a lot of uh, computer scientists, mathematicians in the, in, uh, in the center of surgery, because I repeat, the progress of surgery can be done only by your specialty. And always I say one brain of a surgeon plus one brain of a surgeon, it's only one brain and not two. Uh, but one brain of a surgeon and one brain of a computer scientist, have it. with that, we can have a, a progress in surgery. So one word uh, about the, the center in Sao Paulo, uh, you see the same, or, or, or exactly always the same with education and research. Uh, this one in Rio de Janeiro, uh, a deal with a big uh, uh, American private insurance, uh, also uh, the same. That is in Beirut, in Lebanon, and uh, that is that is your project. That is IRCAD Africa in Kigali. It will be the most important one. Uh, you see, with uh, exactly a fantastic uh, African uh, uh, design, uh, which is done by our architect. And uh, it will be a, a fantastic, uh, a fantastic school for surgery, but also a big, big team of computer scientists. So that is our area of uh, uh, 32, between 32, 36, it depends of uh, computer scientists in IRCAD France. And uh, uh, always I say, uh, you know, I met in my career a lot of very important people. So we, we have exactly the same uh, team of research in uh, Taiwan, and that is due to the, the brain of uh, Liang Yi Chen, who is the science minister of Taiwan. And personally, I met uh, two or three years ago for the first time, and after that, four times, the so President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, and uh, this, this personality is exceptional, he's a visionary. He has understood the power of the digital uh, digital revolution, and that is the reason why you see we we start a, a team in Taiwan, we start a team in Rwanda, but the team in Rwanda will be more important in some uh, in some years because we will have between thirty and forty engineers and mathematicians in the next two or three years. That is a project in China, just to explain to see that the, and the same in China. Uh, three hospitals for minimal invasive surgery, one institute for research and education, so the same, uh, the same concept, and that is a project in the United States, the only one which is not fi finalized, but just to say that thank you very much for your attention. Uh, really, uh, I appreciate this invitation. Uh, why? Because first of all, we we have uh, 36 uh, curriculum vitae of uh, uh, researchers coming from uh, Africa for the center in Africa. Always, they come uh, uh, one month in in France in Strasbourg to be trained by our team. After that, they go back in Africa, and we have uh, every week. Uh, two or three visual conference. Uh, that means uh, each uh, researcher in Africa has like a godfather in France. And that is a fantastic link between uh, uh, the, the European continent and the African continent. And we have been totally impressed by the level of uh, these researchers in Africa, hard workers, uh, Brian Brains, and that is due to show uh, AIMS, the African Institute of Mathematics and Science, but also uh, Carnegie and Mellon uh, University in Kigali. So I was very impressed and very happy. All the team is very, very happy to have this link, this very strong link between the two continents. So thank you very much for your attention. As scientists prepare, right, as everyone prepares to do maybe a similar thing in their country, what do you think scientists should be on the lookout for? Because we have a major issue such as connectivity, for example. Our phones can't connect. So how will we connect when we're talking about surgery, which is a very sensitive issue? The presentation was fantastic, but could we maybe tell scientists who are exploring the same uh, area what they should be on the lookout for? 
Uh, I think, you know, uh, when I visited, uh, when I visited uh, Africa, I think that everything that we do here can be totally duplicated uh, in Africa, absolutely, because, you know, it's just a software, it's not very expensive. I know that uh, the transmission system that you have, especially with your mobile, uh, I think everywhere in, in Rwanda, nearly everywhere you have a 4G, certainly you will have a 5G. So, you know, the only thing which is very expensive is the robotic technology, but we will have also for education uh, robots uh, in, in IRCAD Africa, in Kigali. But I think that today to create a team of computer scientists dedicated to image, because it is a, uh, imaging technology are the most important for the progress of surgery, more than all the different uh, instruments we can have. And that can be absolutely created in Africa without any problem, and especially in Rwanda. Uh, ce que, ce que j'ai expliqué depuis le, le début, c'est que lorsque l'on a créé l'Institut IRCAD, Uh, L'Institut IRCAD a été créé avec le concept de se dire que les progrès de la chirurgie viennent et viendront essentiellement des progrès en mathématiques, en computer science, en développement d'algorithmes, plus que des progrès du geste chirurgical en lui-même. Et depuis uh, le début de la création de l'IRCAD, il y a plus de, de 20 ans, on, on travaille sur ce qu'on appelle la, la chirurgie augmentée. La chirurgie augmentée, c'est à la fois augmentation de la vision. Euh, le rêve du chirurgien, c'est de voir plus que ce qu'il voit normalement. Et pour ça, il faut euh, la réalité virtuelle, la réalité augmentée. Et ça, c'est vous qui pouvez le, le, le développer, bien sûr. Ensuite, il y a la, comment on va augmenter le pouvoir de la main du chirurgien. Et ça, c'est la robotique, robotique, euh, ce qu'on appelle la paroscopique par chirurgie mini-invasive, robotique pour l'endoscopie flexible que vous passez par la bouche, par exemple. Et euh, ensuite, la troisième chose, c'est comment on peut augmenter le, la puissance du cerveau du chirurgien euh, par l'intelligence artificielle, comment améliorer, euh, bien sûr, sa stratégie diagnostique avant l'opération, et ensuite, comment améliorer sa stratégie euh, pendant l'intervention chirurgicale elle-même. Et euh, ensuite, le tout est combiné, c'est-à-dire que la robotique de demain, le robot de demain, il va intégrer l'intelligence artificielle, il va intégrer l'imagerie en trois dimensions et donc la possibilité de réalité augmentée en vision, euh, en, en transparence. Et, et, et j'ai terminé en disant que dans, dans ce que j'appelle la globalisation, puisque c'est extrêmement difficile, euh, c'est aussi difficile en, en, en Europe et en France d'avoir des équipes extrêmement solides dans, dans ce domaine. On, on a décidé il y a quelques années de, 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 de globaliser l'équipe, c'est-à-dire de faire, euh, il y a l'équipe française bien sûr, là pour l'instant on avait l'équipe à, à Taïwan qui travaille aussi énormément sur les mêmes domaines de recherche, et plus récemment, il y a deux ans, on a commencé à créer une équipe en Afrique, à, à, à Kigali, où on a des gens, le, le prochain PhD d'ailleurs vient du Cameroun, il ne vient pas de, euh, du Rwanda, mais donc une équipe africaine. Et on, on, on collecte, on a deux systèmes, on collecte des fonds à la fois en France, mais également au Rwanda, pour pouvoir financer plusieurs salaires de chercheurs, développeurs, euh, en, 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 notamment en intelligence artificielle appliquée à la chirurgie. Et on, on pense que dans l'Institut qui va ouvrir en juillet de 2021 à Kigali, qui va être le, le plus gros institut au monde hein, dans ce domaine de chirurgie euh, mini-invasive, euh, l'équipe qu'on veut créer de 40 chercheurs euh, en, en Afrique, plus l'équipe de Taïwan, plus notre équipe en France, eh bien, il en résultera certainement la plus grosse équipe dans le monde travaillant sur ces domaines euh, de essentiellement intelligence artificielle et développement de, de la chirurgie de demain. Voilà, et je, je répétais que j'ai été séduit. Moi, j'avais jamais été en Afrique. J'ai été séduit lors de mon premier voyage il y a deux ans, où je sais que le président Paul Kagame avait envoyé la ministre de la Santé et l'ambassadeur du Rwanda en France <coughs> visiter l'IRCAD en France. J'ai eu ma première visite et mon premier première discussion avec le président Kagame. J'ai été impressionné par le niveau de, et la vision de ce chef d'État et la manière dont il a transformé le pays après 
le génocide que tout le monde connaît d'il y a 20 ans et c'est la raison pour laquelle toute l'équipe vraiment fait ça avec un réel plaisir. Uh, how long does it take to train people to master the use of the system? Ah, it's, it's long, long. It depends what you, you say. If it is computer scientists to use uh, the software and algorithm, it is approximately one month. If we speak about the surgeon, how to adapt with a new technology, with a 3D modeling that is, uh, you know, uh, perhaps one hour. And with a robot system, it is so intuitive. So that is uh, one, two days uh, of training is absolutely sufficient to, to do that. Mm -hmm. For, for right. minimal invasive surgery, it's more complex. Okay, okay. And what about the margin of error before uh, doing using the normal surgery and now using robotics? Can you give us insight to the margin of error for both? That is a good question. So you know, uh, we we can today. The goal of uh, of the next generation of su of surgery is to do uh, absolutely zero complications. That means no complication. Today, you know that is impossible. But uh, every year you decrease, you decrease, you decrease. But even for a very simple operation like uh, the removal of a gallbladder that is what we call a cholecystectomy very simple operation in united states you have five per year 5000 severe com uh, complications severe complications that means some of these patients uh, they lead to the hepatic transplantation so even if it is only 5000 it's a big economical problem it's big. So the next generation of robotics, not this one, but the next generation integrating artificial intelligence, you will have so many alarms. So that means mm -hmm. if the computer see that the surgeon follow uh, a strategy that he has never seen before, because he will have integrated inside a thousand, thousand of operation, immediately you will have an alarm. So it's exactly It's exactly the system today of aeronautics, for example. So uh, I, I'm really convinced that the next 20 years will be a total, total change in uh, the safety of surgery due to the development of your science. Perfect. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much.